Cats Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've joined me here before. I'm here today to bring to you a video I've been really looking forward to putting up for a long time because this is one of my favourite videos to watch um, with other diamond painting creators on YouTube. It is my year in review <laughs> and the reason that I am putting it up now in April, it's not because I can't tell the time, <laughs> Um, basically, I started my channel last February, February 2022, and when I had this brand new channel, um, it was something that, you know, I'd, I'd missed the boat for kind of the end of 2021 um, year in review videos. So what I did was do a video for my first anniversary of diamond painting, because I picked up diamond painting sort of mid-April 2021. And then I thought I'd just carry on with that. You know, it's it's nice to do the complete year uh, without too much repetition. So that is why I'm here with you today. I have now been diamond painting for two years. I can't believe it. You know, I, I, I never stick with a hobby for this long. Um, so yeah, it just says a lot about how much I enjoy this one. All of the paintings that you will see today have featured on my channel at some point in the last year and um, there may be unboxings, there may be post reviews, there may be, well, <laughs> there could be all sorts. So if you want to see any more details on any of these, do go check out the relevant videos. They are all showing on my channel still. Um, I'm not going to cover a huge amount of detail about each of these today for obvious reasons. <laughs> One, we'd be here all day and two, I've already done the in-depth reviews. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of each of these and, and just, yeah, see them again myself because it's been a while for some of them. So my first year of diamond painting, I completed 16 paintings and my second year of diamond painting, I completed... 16 paintings. <laughs> at least I'm consistent. <laughs> I'm actually filming this right at the end of March because my next couple of weeks are going to be crazy. Um, and I've judged that I'm probably not going to finish any of the others that I'm working on before we get into April. Um, but if I'm wrong, I'll tag them on the end. <laughs> I think it, I think it's going to be 16. Um, there was a range of sizes, obviously, maybe I tended to do slightly bigger, more involved ones this year. Um, I do think I've got quicker, that I am getting through them quicker, but I think maybe the first year I was able to diamond paint for longer periods at a time. And I've just struggled a bit more this year with like neck and shoulder pain and that kind of thing, which has held me up at times, which is frustrating. Um, I counted them up and I've got seven square diamond paintings and nine rounds, which surprised me because I do prefer squares, so I think of myself as doing more of those. I think what it is is that the bigger, more involved paintings are squares and then the rounds have tended to be more sort of snack sizes to, to get through quicker for a change. There is no doubt whatsoever what my favourite company to buy diamond paintings from is because the majority of these are Diamond Art Club. But I do have a few other companies mixed in there. I've worked on ones from Dreamer Designs, Diamond Arts, the one with the Diamond Art and Crafties, as well as the Diamond Art Club paintings. I definitely want to try a few more paintings this year. I'm actually, I'm off to a decent start. I've already tried a couple of new ones recently. <laughs> um, yeah, so without further ado, let's crack on and take a look. So my first diamond painting completion, um, I started this one on the 9th of March 2022, but I finished it on the 26th of April, so just after that first video. And this is Island Time. Let's see, can I get it all in? Have I got the camera set up well? Do you know what? Just about. <laughs> Some of the bigger ones I'm going to struggle, but I think we should be mostly okay. <laughs> So yeah, this is um, based on the artwork of Chuck Pinson. It's a square diamond painting and it's 74 by 55 centimetres. So it's a sort of mid-size painting. And I absolutely loved this one. Do you know, I'm looking over it now and just thinking again how gorgeous it is because this one's been boxed up and I haven't looked at it in ages. I love landscapes, um, but I do find them a bit wearing if the colours are too samey. So I really enjoyed how bright and vibrant the colours were in this one. You know, it, it was just, it was so varied. Really, really pretty. Um, I think I remember a fair bit of confetti in this one because we've got the trees. There's lots of detail in the houses, bitty bits around here. And even the sea, there's a lot of detail and shading in there. 
Um, so it did take me a little while. When I put those dates up about when I started and finished a painting, generally it doesn't mean that I've worked on it all the way through. I'll probably have worked on other ones in between. But I do remember this one taking a little while. It was my third Chuck Pinson landscape that I'd completed. I did a couple the previous year. Um, and I have felt a little bit done with them since then. I haven't picked up any more this year. I still love them. I'll still probably do another one in the future. Um, but yeah, I've just sort of branched out into other kinds of landscapes. The ABs through the trees, I remember it being one of the really, really prettiest bits of this and they're really catching the light now. In fact, there were loads of ABs through this one, like loads in here as well and then just little bits all over the place. I like the details, like picking out the animals and the little boat in the distance I think is really cool. One thing that I remember not loving quite as much with this one is that this was a painting, well, not necessarily bought out, but when I bought it, the restock, um, this was a painting that had a combination of Diamond Art Club's old drills and new drills. Um, so their older square drills um, had a combination of 9 and 13 facets, um, and they were... It wasn't necessarily that they were bigger, but they were a little bit less uniform. So the grid that you diamond painted on used to be a little bit bigger to allow space for the ones that were a bit wonky. And then they changed to the newer drills that all had 13 facets and they were very uniform, very good quality. And later on, they pulled in that grid so that you, it would fit perfectly for the new drills. This was one of the ones I worked on where I had some of those new drills, not all of them, but some of the new drills, um, but on an older grid and I didn't enjoy that part of it because I found it quite hard to avoid gapping. I'm looking at it now though and it doesn't look too bad. I'll see if I can zoom you in a bit. Yeah, I think the glue has kind of cured a bit since I did this and it doesn't seem to be a problem anymore. So that's, that's good to know. So yeah, that was my first completion. My second completion for this year was in Santorini. It's another Diamond Art Club painting, a um, bit smaller this time, 61 by 46 centimetres. It was by Ivailo Nikolov um, and it's a round diamond painting. Um, so like I said, this was one that I did to kind of mix up and get a bit of variety, a bit of a smaller round painting to mix in with the squares I was working on at the time really enjoyed it. It had the older round drills which I believe were acrylic um, and aren't my favourite mainly because they have a very smooth top and I find I'm constantly having to change my wax or putty compared to the newer ones because they, they don't have sort of facets that grip to my multiplacer in the same way. But anyway, <laughs> it was really fun to work on. This section here was surprisingly filled with confetti, particularly this strip here. Um, I'm always fascinated by the way colour plays out in diamond paintings because the the um, the buildings of um, Santorini are famously white but there actually aren't any white drills. <laughs> the palest ones here are cream and sort of pale pink um, because it's it's a sunset painting. You've got the sun setting over here and that light is is falling over Santorini and yeah <laughs> it's the way colours work in real life it's just you don't always think about it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there were some sections of confetti, but as you can see, there was a fair amount of colour blocking in the sea and the sky, so it did work up reasonably quickly. I love this painting because it reminds me of um, a really nice time in my life when I went on this amazing family holiday. Um, my parents had their golden wedding anniversary in July 2019, and they took the entire family, so that's four kids, three of us had partners, and seven grandkids. <laughs> um, all on a cruise around the Greek islands and it was just one of the most magical experiences of my life and it Santa not in Santorini Santorini was one of the islands we stopped at it actually wasn't my favorite island because um it was hard to get to the really scenic bits and the kind of where we were was the more touristy part but anyway it was still gorgeous and yeah it reminds me of that so that was my second completion of this year Let's move on to my next one. Right, next up we have Zoom Zoom. 
This is by the artist Randall Spangler um, and a lot of people will be really familiar with his work if they buy from Diamond Art Club because they're really really popular there, loads have been released um, and I really enjoy these. I don't generally go for more cartoony style um, diamond paintings but there's something about these draglings that draws me in. They're really cute, they have this whole backstory where they like live in this magical land and then they come through to our world particularly to steal cookies and, and other food and they're just really fun. And the colour palette is always absolutely gorgeous in Spanglers because I love bright colours and you always have these really bright, vibrant colours. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I remember just getting a lot out of it. I started working on it on the 25th of May and I finished on the 20th of June. Um, so I must have worked on this quite heavily and not had too many breaks from it to get through it in a month. Um, it worked out quite quickly because there's a lot of colour blocking in the background. And I think this was probably the first diamond painting, no, not the first maybe, but one of the first diamond paintings I worked on from Diamond Art Club with their newer round drills. So just like they upgraded the squares, they upgraded the round drills as well. They became resin, they had these beautifully defined facets, and they're just really, really sparkly. I'll try and, I'm not sure how well it'll pick it up, but yeah, <laughs> they're really lovely. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I just, this one makes me laugh looking at it. There's just something so endearing about it. Um, he's such a fun little character. And yeah, I think it's about time I worked on another draggling. I might have to do that soon because it's been a while. <laughs> right, this next one is a biggie and I'm not going to get it all in frame in one go, but I will show you it as best I can. So <laughs> let's get it turned over. Good lord, it's big. <laughs> Good grief. You forget how big they are when they're tucked away in a box and then you get it out and it's like, wow! So this is Family Circus. Um, let me try and show you the top part. Can I do it without destroying everything underneath? <laughs> I am going to pan over these paintings a bit later. Oh goodness, this isn't going very well. Um, right, let me sort that out. <laughs> Okay, that was too tricky. Everything was getting all messed up. So I'm just going to move the camera instead, which I probably should have done in the first place. <laughs> there you go. So that is Family Circus. And this was the first release from the artist Richard Lorenz, who has since become, it's got to be one of the most popular artists that Diamond Art Club offers. This one came out in April first and I grabbed it in the first release and I was so happy to get it because it sold out very quickly and a lot of people were after it because it is just so much fun. So I started this one on the 18th of May um, and I finished it on the 8th of August. So I did have a few breaks from it because I think I remember working it out and it took me maybe about six weeks or so of diamond painting overall which actually isn't bad considering it is 70 by 93 centimetres. Um, and I'm not the quickest diamond painter out there, so yeah, it, it worked up reasonably quickly. It was the first one I worked on with new square drills and a new tightened grid, and I quickly became obsessed with that. And it's part of the reason why I do so many Diamond Art Club square paintings, because I love, 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 love the way that the diamonds fit together so neatly on that tightened grid. There's a lot of detail in it, but there's also a fair amount of colour blocking, particularly around the edges um, and around this section here. Um, so yeah, that's part of why it didn't take too long, but I love the detail in it. The artist is actually in the Diamond Art Club Facebook group and often comments on how this painting kind of means different things to different people. And that's a theme with his artwork in general, that each of his characters are unique and they mean different things and we all take different things from them. But I think most people I identify with the family madness and definitely for me because I'm one of four kids. So there's my mum and dad, and then there's my siblings and I. I actually sent it over to um, my family, a picture, after I finished it. And we were trying to work out who was who out of all of them. <laughs> and I reckon, and, and a lot of them agreed, this is my biggest sister. Um, probably this is my brother and this is me, because I'm the little one, I'm the baby. Um, and this one looks a little bit grumpy, <laughs> which I have to say does make me think of my brother. And then this one would be my other sister, because this one's very, very stylish. 
<laughs> and that definitely makes me think of her. Um, so yeah, I love that it does resonate on a personal level, but to be honest, even if it didn't, I, I would have enjoyed this painting because it's just so fun. It's, I'm, I'm just, I'm enjoying looking at it again, actually. <laughs> and I have, um, do I have two or three? Yeah, I've, I think I've got three other Richard Lorenzes in my stash. And yeah, once again, looking at this, it's making me want to get one of the others out. <laughs> I think I will probably be doing that soon. I should say as well that where I'm not necessarily able to show you the whole pictures in frame for all of these, I will be panning over them all in a bit more detail and I'll pop that together in a collage towards the end so you'll be able to see them all a bit more up close. So next up was Fairy Tale Sleeping Beauty. This one was fun because I actually asked my viewers to choose. Um, I popped up a thing on Instagram and on YouTube and asked you all to pick which one to, for me to work on out of this one and another Mandy Manzano. And this is the one that you all picked. It was very close, but it was this one. And I was, I was pleased because this was secretly the one I most wanted to work on anyway. Um, so this one I started on the 12th of July and I finished on the 23rd of September. And let me show you that top section. There you are, there's a lot of detail up in that top section as well. There's the prince coming to rescue <laughs> the fairy tale Sleeping Beauty. I love it. This was a round painting. It was 55 by 77 centimetres, so it's the biggest round painting I've worked on possibly ever, certainly this year, because I do tend to be drawn to squares, as I say. Um, and usually a big painting means detail, and detail is going to come across best in squares. But this one I think works perfectly in rounds and the shininess, the extra sparkliness of rounds is just perfect for it because it really brings out the colours which are just honestly magical. There's a fair amount of confetti like around here in the dress bit and like this bit got a little bit wearing at times to dime paint because of all the shading so you'd be working with like you know four or five different shades of pink and four or five different shades of blue in a section but it's so so worth it because that's what gives the amazing detail that comes through and the depth of shading and it's just it's such a good rendering of the original art I think Manny Manzano is an artist whose work really really suits Diamond Art Club's rendering style because it's this sort of stained glass effect and they are known for having quite clear outlines of things so that really comes through and then the depth of the shading as I said is just wonderful. I don't do a lot of her pieces because I really love the way they look but I'm not a big kind of Disney fan and I'm not so much into kind of fairies and that kind of thing and a lot of them I find just they don't they don't fit my style. This is I think the third one I've worked on of hers in total though so I um, I mean when one fits with a subject or a colour pattern or whatever it might be that I like then I will snap it up because I do think they're gorgeous and this one is obviously a fairy tale but it's not all about the princess it's more just the picture and the colours that drew me in even though Sleeping Beauty is rather fabulous with her dress here. <laughs> I think there's a, a sort of abstract quality to it as well. That's what I'm trying to say. And I, I often talk on my channel about how I really appreciate abstract art in diamond painting form. I think it makes some of the most beautiful diamond paintings for my personal taste. So yeah, you get this contrast between the darker colours and the lighter colours and the way it's sort of darker around the edges and then comes in to lighter, more bright colours in the middle. It's just, it's gorgeous. There was only one AB in this one as well, which surprised me. Um, one for one, it's like this orange AB because I think about round paintings that are round probably because of that extra sparkle that you get, like you'd put more ABs and special drills in. But I think it really works. I don't think that anything is missing from this. And I think they did a perfect job. Okay. Next up. This is a smaller one, and this is the first one I'm going to show you that's not from Diamond Art Club. <laughs> this is Wheatfields from Diamond Dots. And this one is a funny one because I worked on this for months on and off, and it's tiny! <laughs> the design size is 51 by 39 centimetres. This is really small for me. <laughs> 
Um, it's a round painting. I think at the time I bought this, Diamond Dots still only did round paintings, but they, they do do squares now, but I don't have any of those. Um, yeah, I started on this on the 7th of June. Um, it was going to be an entry for the Summer with the Masters Diamond Painting event that's run by a couple of content creators I follow, Diamonds and Washi and Tiny Worlds of Wonder. But then I just didn't do much of it, so I didn't really bother pursuing my entry into the event. I ended up finishing it on 9th of October. <laughs> so it's kind of crazy um, that I did this over four months because it really is small. Um, you know, I could do a painting this size in a week <laughs> if I was getting on with it well. And yeah, I talked a lot about it at the time, so I'll try not to repeat myself um, for things that I'll already have put into my post review video. But I just, when I started it, I just didn't enjoy it that much. It was very, very, very confetti heavy. Um, I don't absolutely love the Diamond Dots canvas style. It's this thick fabric and the, you obviously can't see, but the grid itself, it's just like, it's a little bit grainy. Um, and I like to work on a light pad and yeah, it, it was, that was a little bit tricky, but also it was just a huge amount of confetti and it really taught me about myself because I, prior to this, I thought I really quite enjoyed confetti. Sometimes I do, but if I'm going to enjoy it, it needs to be more varied in colour. That's what I learned. And working on like a big section of con like intense confetti, but it's all green or it's all yellow. Yeah. I can only assume that's why I just didn't really get on with it. But then it was a weird thing because when I picked it up in the October, I think I did it for um, my end of quarter free review. I, I posted that I was about halfway through and said, you know, I'm really struggling, but I want to persevere. I don't want to finish it. I, I don't want to not finish it rather. Um, but yeah, then I picked it up again. And for some reason it just clicked. It was like, like when you're reading a book and you're really struggling to get into it and then suddenly you do, you get really into it and you're absorbed in the story and you want to follow it through. It was like that in diamond painting form. So I think I had almost exactly about half completed and that had been slightly torturous, you know, doing like a small bit at a time, putting it away, small bit at a time, putting it away. And I came back to it and then I finished off half the painting in three or four days because that's really all the time that was needed for it. I just, I couldn't keep going with it before. And yeah, got it done. And I'm really pleased that I did get it done. There's a couple that I finished this year. There's another one coming up where I didn't necessarily love working on the painting that much, but I didn't want to give up on them. And it, there is a sense of satisfaction um, and of having done a good job because I got it finished. And it, it's really pretty, you know? Diamond Dots have really good quality round drills. Like, let me zoom you in so you can see, because the quality of these drills is gorgeous. you can see loads of sparkle there they're very very pretty so yeah there's no problem at all with the quality of the kit it just wasn't doing it for me <laughs> but anyway we got there right and next up was another snack size kit it was october by now so i decided to be seasonal and work on a halloween diamond painting I didn't have any really big ones in my stash because Halloween isn't a particularly big deal to me. It's not really something I registered at all until I had a child and he's quite into it, mainly just because of trick-or-treating and getting sweets. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it would be nice. I had this in my stash. Um, I'd had it since about the February and I just, yeah, I thought it would be nice to get it out and work on it. I think at the time I was in a mood for some, in the mood for something that would be quite quick to work up as well. And I knew that this one would be because it's only 41 by 41 centimeters and it's a round diamond painting. Um, so yeah, it's another Spangler. I'd forgotten when I talked about Zoom Zoom that I actually did two Spanglers this year. Um, I told you I like them. <laughs> this one's a bit different because they're normally a bit more detailed. The draglings are smaller, but this, this is just like, it's all about this one. So yeah, as usual, I really enjoyed the bright colors. Just like I said before, it was an interesting one because it's so small, but there were 42 colors. And what I found that's sort of slightly different to other paintings is like you'd have a section of all the orange drills and the red drills, but then they weren't really used again. And a section of purple ones, and they weren't really used elsewhere. So it, it, you'd get a little, little bit sick of one colour in, in one section, but then you'd move on and, and not have to deal with it again. Um, this one has glow-in-the-dark drills. I will see if I can charge them up and, and put a picture on here. 
because that's quite a fun aspect. It was all of these orange ones in the moon and then all of the black drills. So all the outlines of everything with the black drills, they are all glow in the dark. And it looks really fun actually when, when I've charged them under light and, and they glow. The only thing that I can remember not particularly enjoying about this one is that there was a mixture of old and new round drills in it. Um, something that happens, like I mentioned with Island Time, when they're changing to new drills, they use up the old drills before they phase in the new drills. And obviously different colours get used up at different rates. So yeah, there were some drills that were the old style and some that were new. And I think another person would barely notice it. I'm really finicky and fussy, so I just, it annoyed me a little bit that it wasn't uniform, but it really wasn't a huge deal. That's just me being a fuss pot. <laughs> Next up was Abstract Cat. This one I worked on from the 18th of October to the 9th of November. I think I largely worked straight through on this one with a little bit of a gap because I did have a couple of others on the go that I was trying to get done as well. So I love the abstract nature of this. I love cats. <laughs> I love the colours um, and I have always loved the painting Sneaky Cat that Diamond Dark Club has stocked forever and it's a really popular painting that a lot of people have worked on. I did have it at one point, it was one of the first ones I bought from them, but I ended up destashing it because it, it's quite large, it's quite confetti heavy and it's not got a huge range of colours and by this stage I had learned that I just if I'm going to do a large painting with lots of confetti I want more varied colours. So I felt like if I did that I'd probably get a bit bored and this was great to pick up because it was such a similar style, very similar colours but it was a lot smaller. This one is only 51 by 51 centimetres. It's a square diamond painting um, and I remember this one for the fact that I finally got used to using a larger multi-placer with this one. I've been kind of stuck at using a four-placer and I really wanted to be able to do longer multi-placers. Um, so that I could just work on different paintings really, you know, not keep avoiding paintings with colour blocking. And I got the hang of a seven place with this one because it's a sort of, what I would call a sort of semi-colour blocking piece. It's not really full colour blocking because apart from a few sections like here and here, there's not any like really big sections where you can get going with a big multi-placer. Um, but at the same time it's not really confetti. There's not a huge amount of places where you're doing, you know, you've got a colour out and it's one here, one there, one there. Most of it could be done with a multi-placer um, and you might only be doing two, three, four drills at a time, but yeah, you could get through it quite quickly, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I enjoyed that. I am obsessed with the eyes. I think they are absolutely stunning. <laughs> There were these blue ABs in there um, that catch the light and they're gorgeous. But just even without those, I think they're stunning. The way they're rendered, the way they perfectly capture the idea of light shining on this cat and reflecting from his eyes. Yeah, beautiful. And the colours are so much fun. I'm looking at it again now and just thinking how nice this was to diamond paint. I remember that I had some older drill ABs which were a bit of a squeeze in places because this one did have a slightly tighter grid but it was fine and you know I just got this out now and nothing's popped off it so you know not a problem um yeah it's gorgeous I, I would like to pick up more of Evisit's artwork actually that's the artist who it's from she does have a few at Diamond Art Club um there's not really any others on their website at the moment that totally draw me in but yeah definitely someone I'll be looking out for in the future. Next up was Otter. So this one came out in August and I bought it and kitted it up pretty much as soon as it came because this one's quite special. My son is obsessed with otters. Actually he's obsessed with most animals but otters are his favourites. And the week this came out, I showed him the picture and I knew he was going to want for me to get it and he did. And he really wanted us to get it and work on it together. He's nine and he has completed a couple of small diamond paintings in the past, but he hadn't done any for a while at this point. And I was sceptical. <laughs> 
that he would actually work on it that much. And I was proved correct. I did do about 95% of this time painting. But we did have a nice experience of working on it together at the start. We kitted it up together and the first couple of rows um, he, he was getting involved. This little section down here, <laughs> this is his work. I think I did go over it and straighten it a little bit, but it, it was neat. I was impressed. So I finished this in November for him for his birthday um, because the plan is to frame it. I have got a frame. But his room that he's in now is just a bit too small, like all of the walls are already used up with things that he doesn't want to take down. Um, and this is 59 by 43 centimetres, so it's not a huge diamond painting, but it, it would, sorry I'm just picking off some fluff I saw, <laughs> but it, it would take a big chunk of wall space out of his current room. He's going to be moving to a different bedroom at some point soon though, so hopefully we'll get it up then. It has round drills, which are mega, mega sparkly, really pretty. Hopefully you can see them a little bit if I do this. Um, it was the first painting I worked on since Diamond Art Club changed the way they print their canvases for rounds. So previously um, there were quite clear guide circles on their round diamond painting canvases. And what that means is the symbol would have a clear circle that you could aim your round drill for. The newer ones have very, very faint guide circles, um, but they're much, much fainter that you can almost not see them. The idea being if you don't quite cover it, it's not going to ruin the effect. You're not going to see things peeping out. I did used to quite like the guide circles. Um, I know that some people don't. A lot of people, in fact, the majority of people seemed really happy that Diamond Art Club um, did away with them. I used to like them because I found that it helped me be neater so it wasn't a problem that symbols would peek out because they wouldn't because I was putting them in the right place, if that makes sense. Um, it did take me a little bit of time to adapt but I, by the end of this fairly small painting I felt quite comfortable with that so it, it wasn't too much of a problem. It was just, you know, a slight learning curve. Um, I don't think I'd done many rounds from other companies that didn't have guide circles or at least not recently so yeah. The otter himself was, I mean, I'm going to call him a labour of love. <laughs> I did this for my son because this is quite intense confetti in various shades of brown. <laughs> Let's take a closer look. So you can probably just about make out there all the different shades of brown and beige <laughs> that make up this beautiful otter. So yeah, it, that took a little while. But then for balance, the water section around him, that's that's a lot of colour blocking. So, you know, it was swings and roundabouts. I did find I needed to take a few breaks because of all the brown. Um, not my favourite colour to work with. But it was totally worth it to get this done. I'm really pleased with it. He is very cute. It's not a painting I necessarily would have picked for myself because there's only 23 colours. and it's just It's not one that I would personally have gone for but I think he's adorable and my son really loves him. Right, moving on. Next up, um, it was getting into December and this was my Christmas pick for the year, Gnome Carolers. So I started this on the 8th of December and I finished it on the 19th of December. I was ill um, most of the way through December with what turned out to be COVID. Um, yeah. I was ill for a while and I didn't test positive for a while, but yeah, turn out to be that. Anyway, <laughs> what I'm saying is it's a pretty small snack size painting. It's 47.9 by 42.6. Ordinarily, I'd expect to do a painting that size in probably around a week. It took me a little longer because of not being well, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not a race. I'm just giving you the context. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this painting. I picked it out because I didn't really want to do a large Christmas painting. There were some beautiful releases last year across several different companies. Loads of paintings that I loved and could easily have worked on. But I had other projects on the go as well that I didn't necessarily want to just put down for ages. I'm not one for working on paintings out of season. So if it's a Christmas painting, I want to be working on it in the Christmas season. I know I'm not going to fancy working on that in January. So I just wanted a quick one so I could do a Christmas painting but not have it take over all of my diamond painting time. Um, it's really cute. <laughs> I like it a lot. I 
love the way that you've got these bright reds and greens and some yellows in the trees and the gnomes and then it really pops out against the white background of the snow. I say white, there is some white but there's also a lot of pale blue, there's a lot of shading going on in the snow and in the sky and that was one thing that surprised me with this one, I probably thought that it was going to work up a little bit quicker than it did and it turned out to be quite heavy on confetti but that was fine, it was only small and it was all totally worth it. To be honest, that's my mistake, I should have clocked it because trees, like I've never ever done painted a tree that didn't have lots of confetti in it. <laughs> but the sky as well was, it had a fair amount. And I'm not sure if you can see, I might have to zoom you in again, but the top there, the sky, we have iridescent drills. So these bits here are Diamond Art Club's iridescent drills. I would previously have called them crystal drills, so other companies might have the same kind of drills um, and call them something else. But Diamond Art Club calls them iridescent drills, so I'll call them that. There's also quite a lot of ABs you can see in the hats and up in the lamp. So it was, it was a really fun, glowy, sparkly kind of a painting that I enjoyed a lot. So that was my Christmas painting. Okay, moving on. Next up we have another snack size kit. During this period I was working on a bit of a beast of a painting, a couple of them actually. So I was doing snack size ones in between and getting those finished first. So this was my first ever painting from Crafties. And this is Evening Stars, or Evening Star, I can't remember. <laughs> by the artist Carla Gerard, who is one I absolutely love. I've got a couple of others by her in my stash and I really enjoy her work because it's abstract, it's bright and colorful. Like you can tell what I like by this point, I'm sure. <laughs> so yeah, I enjoyed this. It was, it was good to try one from a different company. Um, so I worked on this from the 19th of January to the 26th of January, according to my notes. So it only took me about a week. It's fairly confetti heavy in a lot of places. One thing I will say about this is I was a little bit disappointed that it wasn't bigger. I felt like it could have been a decent amount bigger around the sides um, and it would have been a little bit less packed with confetti but also those details would have come out. You know these houses down here are a little bit hard to make out in places. Let me zoom you in actually because it's so small it's quite far away. <laughs> So yeah, these, these bits around here, they're just, I mean, part of it is a rendering choice. Um, you know, they're not outlined in such a clear way. You've got lots of different colours going on. So there's a sort of blurred, muted effect. But yeah, I just, I felt like it could have been better if it was a bit bigger. Crafties are a company that tend to make their paintings fairly small. They do have some a bit larger than this now. This is a slightly older one on their website, but they don't go for really big ones. Um, so in that respect, if you're someone who likes smaller paintings, they're a really good one to check out. But yeah, like I say, just with this one, I feel like being a tiny bit bigger would have been an improvement. There's 26 colors. I was a little bit confused by the colors on this one because when I bought it, and actually when I checked back, because I originally bought it months ago, but when I checked back in January, the website says something like 23 colors, I think. And it mentions a couple of kind of special drills, but not all of them, because I seem to have three different kinds of special drills in this one. Um, so I had AB drills, which I can't remember what they call them, something like star ABs or something like that. I had crystal drills, um, and then I also had, so these blue ones that outline the trees and these white ones down here, they had a code um, that started with a Y, which makes me think that they are some sort of special drill. And the look of them made me think of glow-in-the-dark drills, but I couldn't charge them. So if you ever have glow-in-the-dark drills on a painting, you need to shine a bright light over them for quite a long time and it kind of charges them up and then when you turn the lights off that's when they'll glow. I did try and charge them and nothing happened. So I don't know if I didn't do it enough, I don't know if I didn't use the right kind of light because I'm a little hazy on the details of how you do it. But yeah, 
I'm a little bit baffled still about what those are and as I say they weren't described on the website it only mentioned one of the special drills which I think was the ABs or maybe the crystal drills anyway <laughs> it was a little bit strange um it had acrylic drills they were they were perfectly decent I don't remember having any particular problems with the quality um they're the ones that I mentioned before with the smooth top so um, the finished effect is lovely and very, very shiny. They are just a little bit less fun to work with for me because I find I have to change out my pen all the time and that irritates me because <laughs> I'm not a patient person. <laughs> so yeah, overall, I'm happy. I enjoyed it. It was a really nice change to work on that and get it done in a week. I just would have preferred it was a little bit bigger. I will try Crafties again though. Um, but yeah, I, I think... They're a paint by number specialist and it shows their diamond art. It just, it, it's it got a little way to go compared to some of the other companies that are doing really good licensed quality art. Like it's got this sort of plasticky canvas, for instance, that I associate more with, um, you know, your kind of Amazon, AliExpress um, sort of unlicensed artwork. This one is licensed <laughs> to avoid confusion. But yeah, I, I would hope to see some upgrades from them at some point in the future. Next up was my first and so far only painting from the one with the diamond art and this was their taster kit. Oh, I'm still zoomed in. Um, so yeah, this was their taster kit that they offered. I bought this in about March or May 2022 um, and I regret that a little bit in retrospect because I had acrylic drills and I do not love acrylic square drills. I don't find them to be as shiny and sparkly and I find them to tend to have a lot of trash of the kind that will make drills pop out. So I had to sift through these a lot because there were lots of little tabs on the sides and dimples and that kind of thing. Um, and in August of last year, the one with the diamond dart upgraded their drills and they became resin. So I kind of wish that I had waited and got it then because I liked the idea of having a test kit and that's literally what this was called. It was called Taster Kit and it was a cheap kit so that you could try out how they do things. So yeah, it's a shame really that I didn't try out how they would be if I bought one now. But they are definitely a company that I expect I will buy from again in the future. If you're not familiar with them, because particularly to my um, sort of US and Canadian based viewers, they might not be a company you've heard of so much because they are a UK company. They do license artwork only um, and they do offer, I think, worldwide shipping, certainly a fair amount of international shipping. And it's pretty reasonably priced because they actually ship direct from China. So they're a UK based company, but the orders go to China to be fulfilled and then get shipped. So it takes a bit longer is the downside, but the upside is that you don't have to pay as much as you would if they were in the UK. So it's pretty good, I think, for such a small painting. It was 30 by 40 centimetres. Um, when I'm up close to it, I'm not so impressed with the rendering. From a viewing distance, I think it's really, really good. It's, it's, I mean, paintings always look different from a distance. That's why you're supposed to be a viewing distance. But I don't remember ever having a painting where that difference was so stark. I'm looking at it in the viewfinder now and I can see it looks pretty good. And then in person I'm like, oh, it's blocky and weird looking. <laughs> so yeah, must step back. <laughs> and they have a really nice canvas. I like this a lot. It feels like what Dreamer Design's newer style canvases feel like, if that's a kind of reference that might help you know what I mean. It's a sort of very soft, um, sort of cotton woolly type background. It's very flexible and lightweight and yet, you know, pretty sturdy. It's got nice surged edges, so it's not going to fray. That part of it, I think, is brilliant. I just, I need to try them again with their new resin drills and, and see how I like it. But anyway... Oh, I ran out of one colour as well. It became the first painting I've ever run out of a colour on. <laughs> but I had some of that colour in my spare drill stash, so I just used those. Right, moving on. We're getting there, which is a good thing, because I have to start dinner fairly soon. <laughs> um, so my next finish is one that you will probably have seen on the channel before if you followed me for a while. This is... The old waterway cottage. 
This is from Dreamer Designs, so it's the only Dreamer Designs that I actually finished this year because this was the painting I have worked on for the longest. Out of all the paintings I've ever done, this one took me the longest, is what I mean. I started this one on the 14th of April 2022 and I finished it on the 10th of February 2023. And honestly, to put it fairly bluntly, the reason for that is I did not massively enjoy this one. I absolutely love the finished piece and most of what I experienced that I didn't enjoy about it is not at all a reflection on the art or dream designs or anything it was all about personal preference um but yeah I bought this back in July 2021 back when I still really really loved confetti so I didn't mind detail at all and then by the time I was working on this I just I was a little bit over intense confetti and the thing with this one is that it is full of very intense confetti but also a lot of it is in the same colours like there's a lot of green there is a lot of green confetti and it would take a long time to do a section and I would just get bored of working with very similar colours but constantly having to change them out so it was taking a long time um some of the drills also weren't the best quality um they tended to have a lot of tabs and holes and be a bit uneven in size, which meant that when I was working on the sky sections, that could have been a bit of relief from the confetti because I could have multi-placed them quick. I did multi-place them, but I had to spend quite a lot of time straightening them because it was, it was quite gappy. Um, I wonder if I can show you exactly how gappy it was. If I zoom in. Ooh, that's really close, but yeah. <laughs> There's no light pad behind it or anything, so you maybe can't see as clearly. But yeah, there's quite a lot of gaps. That section actually isn't too bad. <laughs> Not sure it's in the best section to show you, but I, I don't want to move the camera around. But yeah, it, it, that was just, you know, a little thing that irked me a tiny bit. Um, I did run out of one shade of blue as well, so I had to raid my stash for that. And one of the things that I said in my post review of this, and I still stand by it looking at it now, is that I think that Dreamer Designs would do well to start varying the sizes of their paintings a little more. Other companies will offer a variety of sizes or they will pick a size that they think will suit a painting the best. Dreamer Designs does have different sizes of paintings available, don't get me wrong, but they have certain standard sizes that they go back to a lot. One of which is 80 by 60, which is what this painting is, and they do a lot of paintings in that size and some of the paintings that they picked to put in that size I feel would benefit by being just like 10 centimeters or so bigger all around and that that would actually iron out a lot of the confetti so it may not take any longer to work on but the finished effect would be better because some of these bits like these flowers I just I've had flowers and very detailed sections like that be rendered better from other companies I don't it's the brutal truth. So I am really happy with the finished piece. I do think it looks gorgeous, but yeah, it wasn't my favorite to work on by a long stretch of the imagination. And I think it could be better. Dominic Davison is still one of my favorite artists though. I think his landscapes are just beautiful and I love the use of color in them. And that's been captured really well. The, the light in the sky, the sunlight shining onto this section of grass. So it's really bright and glowy. So yeah, that was the old waterway cottage. Moving on, more to go. <laughs> so I will try and be super quick about these last few because they've been on the channel very recently in post reviews. So if I don't seem to say very much about them, do go check out those post reviews. This is Second Dream. And this is one of my favorite paintings I've ever completed. It's 73.7 by 55.8 centimetres, so it's actually another decent sized round painting. Um, yeah, I picked this up in the Black Friday sale. It was the first one that I saw that they previewed that I was like, yep, I guess I'm buying on Black Friday then. <laughs> and I think other people felt similarly because it did sell out quite quickly on the day. It is stunning. It is so shiny. I don't know if I can possibly capture it in this lighting. But yeah, it's it's gorgeous. You've got all these dark blue drills. And by the way, it went quite quickly because all this middle section, there is a ton of colour blocking. Although the outer edges have a lot of confetti. 
to be fair so that did balance it a little bit like this last section when I was trying to get it finished it was just yeah it was trucking away without thinking yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to this being done these flowers down here I think are stunning they've got loads of different shades of blue in it and it just perfectly captures them and ABs as well that was something that stood out about this one the ABs and it didn't feel like there were tons of them in the pots they weren't in huge you know I did I used my Elizabeth Ward storage and I wasn't having to use the really big pots for, for the AB drills and yet they seem to be everywhere there was a lot of the white one down here the rest are just peppered around liberally everywhere and they just they're so perfect for a painting like this with this really dreamlike abstract quality to it the artist is Andy Russell there's this one and another one at Diamond Art Club currently um, and I really hope that they bring more of his work because I just I love it I have one from another company as well and um, I keep saying this and I will not possibly get through as many paintings this year <laughs> as I keep saying I want to work on but I think I want to work on that one soon <laughs> right next up is my biggest painting I've ever completed Again, this is one that I completed pretty recently and put up a post review for, so I'm not going to spend too long on it. Oh, it's so big, it's hard to turn over in the space I'm in. <laughs> this is House on a Cliff. Goodness me. Okay. Um, yeah, I can't get all of it on. I'm going to pan over it in a bit, so I'm not too worried about that, but that shows you the majority of it. So this is 98 by 70 centimetres. There we are. <laughs> That's as much as I can fit on in one go. Um, it had... 62 colours and I love 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 as I said earlier about island time um landscapes but specifically landscapes that still have lots of colours that they're not too muted and that's what I found wonderful about this one it came out in the mystery boxes in September and it was only in the first mystery boxes it was never sold separately so I was incredibly glad that I managed to get hold of that first mystery box because as soon as I saw this one I was like I need that painting I really really want it it was pretty confetti heavy in a lot of places, which proves to me that I can do confetti as long as the colours and the drills and everything are working for me. Um, but there was a fair bit of colour blocking as well in the sky in this section. So there were parts that went quite quickly and parts that went quite slow. I just, it's, it's stunning. I did have a few quality issues with this one, which is very unusual for Diamond Art Club. I'm not going to go into all those now because I did cover them in detail in my post review. But... What I will say is that even though there were the most significant quality issues I've ever come across in a Diamond Art Club kit, I still absolutely loved it. I still loved every moment of working on it. I started it on the 22nd of November and I finished it on the 7th of March. I did have a few breaks, like I said earlier when I was showing you all those snack sized ones. This is the big one that I had going in the background um, and yeah, I took breaks when I needed a bit of a break from confetti. Um, but it, it's gorgeous. I love it. It is another of my absolute favourites that I've ever finished and I would do it again. <laughs> I think the details are fabulous as well. Look at the little dog. <laughs> okay, moving on to my last finish of this year um, and this one is going to be the only mystery kit. So if you don't want to see this one, um, look away now. What I'll be doing from this point on is showing you the mystery kit and then panning over all the canvases in more detail. So if you don't want to see the um, mystery kit, which is the abstract mystery kit from Briz Bazaar, skip forward a bit if you want to join the rest of it. And if you are worried about seeing any of it and you're going to leave now, then thank you very much for watching. Right. This one again I'm not going to dwell on for long, the post review for this was only up I think last week. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you quickly, oh that's the sound of it sticking to my table. This table needs sanding down and revarnishing. it's going to be sticky. <laughs> Oops! There we are. Oh look I can get the whole thing in. 
So this was 50.8 by 68.7 centimetres and I had bought, f I have five mystery kits from Diamond Art Club but I had never worked on one until this one. If you're not sure what a mystery kit is, um, the background, the canvas rather, would be either all black and white or with a few colours on it but they don't match the colour of the drill. So the idea is you can't look at the canvas and just immediately see what the picture is. So the symbols, as you can see here, they're black and white and that's how it is all across the canvas. So I was a little bit daunted about how I would find the experience but I actually really enjoyed it. I felt like I adapted quite quickly. Um, I was a bit more prone to missing drills of a certain colour and having to go back over the section or making mistakes that I, I think mostly caught and went back over. Um, but other than that, it, it felt pretty normal pretty quickly. I love the colours in it. This is one that when I'd kitted it up, I just sat there admiring the box of drills because they were so pretty. I love working with bright blues and pinks and purples and the ABs and yeah, I love it. I love abstract artwork as I keep saying and it was gorgeous. It was such a good one to start with. A lot of colour blocking in it so it worked out pretty quickly. Some more detailed sections particularly down here but yeah it was a really great experience. I enjoyed it a lot. So I am now going to do a quick pan over each of these uh, kits just to show you in a little bit more detail. Let's take a closer look at them all. When we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy but things are finally right With you and I the future is bright oh, You and I we got it oh, We don't need no more oh, Even in the hard times You and I can weather it Crickets see the moon Side by side and through and through No limit to what we can do Oh, we know what we have Let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right
If I wrote you a poem, if I posted a letter, is it me?
on my chest, my heart. 